10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, episode 273. Hey everybody, welcome into episode 273 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us again. We are into a new month, the month of August 2021, which means that we are going to continue our series on triad workouts. And we're going to keep working on those chromatic major triads, but we're going to flip them in a different way this week. So before we jump into the show, just a reminder that you can get all of the exercises that I am presenting to you in this episode in PDF format by joining our Patreon. And Patreon is a way to support the show. We are a listener-supported podcast, which means that we don't have any ads on the show, and it's up to listeners like you to keep this podcast going. We've got a great community over on Patreon. So if you're not a member, please consider joining for a very small monthly fee and you get a ton in return for that small donation every month. So I want to thank our new $5 patron Strauss this week for joining up, joining the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson family. And of course, thank you to the over 300 members we have over there that have been supporting us for a long time. You can join by going to 10minutejazzlesson.com, clicking on one of the Patreon banners, and the sign-up process is extremely easy. And once you're signed up, you get instant access to all of those materials. Okay, so let's jump into today's episode. So what we did in part one and two of this series was we talked about playing root position major triads in either a three-note or a four-note grouping, and we did those moving up and down chromatically through all 12 keys. So we're gonna continue that trend this week. The only thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a little bit harder by not starting in root position. So the first one I would like you to take a look at is exercise number one on your PDF this week. And we're gonna talk about these patterns, how I came up with them and how they're gonna help you. So when I'm doing an exercise number one, I'm still taking a four note triad and I am moving up by half steps through all 12 keys, but this time I'm starting each triad on the third. And this is sort of the next step in your understanding in triads, your ability to get around triads in a way that won't limit you or you know stop you in your tracks when you come to a certain key. That's kind of the whole goal of this entire series is to get you just totally fluent in major triads. So what we're doing is we are starting on the third in concert C of the first triad. We're playing three, one, then we're jumping up to five, then we're coming back down to three, And then all that third does is it moves up a half step into the next key, concert D flat, and starts the pattern over again. So the pattern is three, one, five, three, move up a half step, three, one, five, three, move up a half step, so on and so forth until you get all the way back to concert C. So you're doing it through an entire octave, every key chromatically. So remember, the point of these exercises, whether you're starting on the root or in this case, the third, is to end the triad on the same note that you started it on. So in this case, we are starting it on the third, and the last note we play in that four note grouping is also the third, which is going to allow us this smooth half step to get up to that next key. And that is, again, going back to the concepts of voice leading, stuff we talk about on the show all the time. But that's really the way that you're gonna make these exercises sound really smooth and be able to get from one key to the other. So let me play the exercise a couple of times for you. And remember the pattern is three, one, five, three, move up a half step to that next key. This is exercise number one on the PDF.
Alright, so you can hear that exercise flows really nicely from one key to the other. And the tricky part about this is that you have to know the third of each triad. You have to know it just as well as the root. The root is obviously very, very easy because the note that you're playing is the triad that it belongs to. But now you need to be able to associate, let's say, an E with a C major triad because you're starting on E, but your brain has to be able to make that leap and say, okay, I'm playing the note E, but I'm actually playing a C triad. This is stuff that we've talked about on the podcast a lot is that you have to have that freedom of not playing the root. And if you want more information on this, check out our episodes called Curing Root-itis. That is where we talk about this topic in depth. And it's the same thing here. All right, so let's take a look at exercise number two. So exact same concept, but this time we're starting on the fifth. So the pattern that we're following now is five, one, three, five. Then that moves up a half step to the next key, five, one, three, five, up a half step, five, one, three, five, and so on and so forth. Again, through an entire octave playing each major triad. Here's what exercise number two sounds like on your PDF with the five, one, three, five pattern. <laughs> So again, same idea. We're just playing each triad in chromatic half steps, but this time you are going to have to know what the fifth is associated with each key. And this exercise may provide a little bit of trouble for certain instruments, like maybe the saxophone. Um, I, you can hear when I'm playing that exercise that one thing that I'm really trying to work on with that exercise is the big jumps in certain ranges. So for instance, in that particular exercise, I'm having trouble jumping from the five all the way down to the one in certain ranges and you could hear it when I play it it's really not sounding great so playing that perfect fifth in certain parts of the saxophone is really really tough for me so that's something that I've been working on in the practice room and clearly it's not quite there yet but that's okay I'll keep working on it so depending on what instrument you play you may have a little bit of trouble with this one because it does involve a rather large interval which is a fifth Okay, so for the final exercise this week, what I've done is I've started to make things a little bit more complicated. So this one's gonna take a little bit of explanation. I'm just gonna go ahead and play it for you first, and then we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so you can hear that that one is different. There's more going on there. So if you've got the PDF in front of you, I want you to pause the show right now and see if you can figure out what is going on with that. Not super complicated, but it's definitely different than the exercises that came before it. So go ahead and pause it now. All right, so hopefully you've looked at that. You've maybe figured out what's going on. What I'm doing is I'm switching up the pattern. I have a basically a two-part pattern. So if you look at the first measure of exercise number three, it starts with a three, five, three, one pattern. And then 
the next triad up a half step goes one, three, five, three. So now I'm using two patterns in the same exercise, which is going to be the next step in your development with these. Now you've got to keep track of two patterns along with very, very rapidly moving in between keys. And this is going to give us a little taste of some of the stuff that we're going to do next week to sort of put a period on this series but this is not easy. So what I'm doing is the fact that I'm ending the first pattern on one and then starting the next pattern on one is going to make it so that we have that nice smooth voice leading between the keys. So the first pattern ends on one, the second pattern starts on one, the second pattern ends on three, and then we go back to the first pattern that starts on three. And I know what I just said was confusing, but if you're looking at the exercise, it's going to make sense to you. So two patterns that move through all 12 keys that have that nice voice leading. Now, here's the thing about this one. In the first episode in this series, we talked about the fact that with some of these exercises, you have to do them descending as well as ascending so that you get each pattern moving in each direction. So this is the same thing. We have to do this pattern descending and reverse everything. So everything that got pattern one going on the way up is going to get pattern two going on the way down and vice versa. So this is one that you have to make sure you do both ascending and descending so that you get the maximum practice on each one of those patterns. Okay, so hopefully this all made sense. I'm gonna play that exercise one more time for you. Okay, so you can hear we're just ramping up the difficulty as you get more comfortable with this idea of playing these chromatic major triads, we're just making it a little bit more difficult, making you think on that next level, next level, next level. And that's really how you should be approaching this type of practice. Once you get one thing down, challenge yourself with a little bit of a variation on what you were just playing that makes it a little bit more difficult. Just like everything with exercises, the possibilities are literally endless with this kind of stuff. So you should always have something new to work on and there's never an excuse. Just make it a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder. So let me know if you have any questions on this. Remember, you can get the PDFs in all the keys uh, by going to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, clicking on one of the Patreon banners and getting yourself signed up for instant access to a PDF from every single episode episode that we've ever done, which is 273 PDFs at this point. Not a bad deal for a small monthly fee. Uh, if you have any questions on this, please drop them in the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Community Facebook group, or you can always get in touch with me, 10 Minute Jazz Lesson at gmail.com. Hope you're all doing well out there. I hope you practiced the stuff from parts one and two, because if you haven't yet, you've got to do that before you move on to this particular episode. I hope this challenges you. I hope this makes you a better musician at the end of the day. And most of all, I hope you're all doing well out there, staying safe and healthy. We'll see you next week with part four. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye.